the youngest contender of the five, the national teenage candidate, is a 22-year-old pop singer whose latest disc is called Jack the Ripper. The funny thing, and he was funny, about David Such was that for a man who became a monster raving loony, he was far from stupid or mad. In 1966, he stood for the National Teenage Party in Heighton against PM Harold Wilson. For David Edward Such, 585 votes. Promoting a lowering of the voting age from 21. He wasn't just a novelty politician, though, but a 60s wild man on the music scene. He played alongside Keith Moon. This is a rehearsal scene from a romp of a play about his life coming to London soon. He might have stayed with music were it not for getting shot at in America during a mugging. And he came back in the 1980s and back into politics in 1983. The monster raving loony party, an attempt to prick political pomposity and have a laugh, which in the infamously heated South Bermondsey by-election of that year was probably needed. No, David Edward Sutt. Official monster raving loony party. 97. Though over time, not everyone saw the joke. People like you, you're ruining this country, you! Loonies contested by-elections and general elections, often standing side by side with prime ministers, and by 1997, Lord Such was included in a novelty range of leaders' chocolate heads. But the party's legendary moment was in the first bootle by-election of 1990, where the loonies upset an otherwise rather mundane affair, as the BBC reported. The other fragments of the shattered alliance who disagreed with merger were represented in Bootle, the Liberal at least avoiding the indignity suffered by the SDP, who were beaten by the monster raving loony party. Lord Such immediately offered an electoral pact to the SDP. David Such's suicide in 1998 did not mean that loonydom ended. He was much missed. But what's really funny is that Looneydom's legacy includes absurd policies that actually became law. Passports for pets, 24-hour licensing laws, lowering the voting age, legalisation of commercial radio and the abolition of the 11-plus exam. And that things that were once considered utterly absurd are now law is probably the best tribute to the loonies and satirises genuine policies that might actually be crazy. But then in British politics, such is life. The first cabinet reshuffle. Come and shuffle along a bit. There we go, there we go. All right, the first shuffle.